Hi everyone, welcome back to the series called RBI 247. I am Tanvi Kaur, your mentor for finance current affairs. In this mini series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. Before I start with the first question, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can be updated about all our upcoming videos. If you want the free PDF of this very session, then please join our Telegram group. Link is in the description below. All the free material is provided in the form of PDFs to you all through this very group only. Now let's start with first question. That says, identify the statements correctly related to P notes. So here P notes stands for the participatory notes. Let's first try and understand what are these participatory notes, what's the latest news going on related to this, then we'll come back to the question and answer it. So recently data out hua hai which relates to the amount of investments coming to Indian capital markets in the form of P notes. So P notes to hai ye ek ka ek financial instrument hai. When foreign investors want to invest in India, but they want to keep their identity anonymous. They don't want to register with SEBI, but they want to invest in the Indian securities market. Then they have one option available and that is P notes. So participatory note is a financial instrument that we will discuss karenge. But before that, let me tell you that the level of investments which are coming to India through P notes have actually declined. So, if we talk SEBI ki data, ki baat kare, to SEBI ki data ki according to the investments P notes ke through India mein aa rahi hai, in equity, in debt, or in other hybrid securities, they were worth 95,500 crores in December. So, 95,000 crores ke upar jo investments India mein aa rahi thi December mein P notes ke through, they have further declined in January to 87,989 crores. So we have seen a decline in the level of investments coming through P notes in India. Now we will see what are P notes. Hote kya hai. As I have told you that they are a financial instrument through which overseas investors can actually invest in India. So what is the difference between normal investments? Ye kaise alag hai? That is because you don't need to register yourself directly. You, through the foreign institutional investors, you can actually make an, make an investment in India. So foreign institutional investors, kuch badi institutions hoti hain, jo internationally operate kar rahi hain, they make investments in India. Okay, so FIIs are those institutional investors who invest in the assets that belong to different country. So, koi or India ke bahar ka institutional investor, jab India ke assets mein invest karega, then it will be a FII investing in India. So, uh, there are various big institutional investors which comprise of various big companies, jaise ki mutual fund houses ho gaye, investment banks ho gaye, ye sab India mein invest karte hain. So various foreign investors can approach these institutional investors. They will issue them the P notes and further make an investment in India. So this way a foreign investor can indirectly invest in India through P notes without the need to register themselves. SEBI ke saath register karne ki zarwat nahi hai. FII ke through wo apni investment route kar sakte hai. Or in return unko participatory notes issue honge. They will be getting or earning the returns on them. Okay, so this whole procedure is These P notes are liquid. They can be easily transferred. Their ownership transfer can be easily you are a security holder, you can buy and sell. Kar sakte ho. So by having a P note, you are becoming a holder of certain securities and they have the liquidity. You can actually transfer these P notes. Okay, so while FIIs have to report to SEBI about the investments, they don't need to disclose the identity of actual investors. A foreign institutional investors ko SEBI ko ye to report karna hai that we are making this much of investment over here. But they don't need to disclose the identity of people whose money is being rooted over here. So, kaun hai jo FIIs ko paisa de raha hai aur wo further paisa India mein laga rahe hai, that is not to be disclosed. So, there are various investors operating worldwide who want to invest in India but they don't want to disclose their identities. So, for them this is the route. 
ये पार्टिसिपेटरी नोट्स क्यों इंट्रोड्यूस किए गए इन ऑर्डर टू अट्रैक्ट मोर फॉरेन इन्वेस्टमेंट इन इंडिया यू डोंट नीड टू गो थ्रू दी हेजल्स ऑफ रजिस्टरिंग विद सेबी विदाउट डिस्कलोजिंग योर आइडेंटिटी यू कैन इजिली मेक एन इन्वेस्टमेंट सो दिस इज अ गुड ऑप्शन फॉर सच इन्वेस्टर्स सो इंडिया में ज्यादा से ज्यादा फॉरन इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आए पार्टिसिपेटरी नोट्स के थ्रू दैट वॉज द बेसिक ऑब्जेक्टिव ओके ज्यादा फॉरेन इन्वेस्टर्स सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट में इन्वेस्ट करेंगे तो वो फर्दर एफ टी आई भी अट्रैक्ट करेगा सो दीज आर यू एम्स विद विच पी नोट वर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड सो एडवांटेजेस विच दे ऑफर टू द इन्वेस्टर्स इज फर्स्ट दिटी एज वी हैव डिस्कस्ड मोर ओवर इट इज वेरी इजी टू बाय एंड टू बेसिकली इन्वेस्ट एंड देन सेल ऑफ दीज पी नोट सो ईज ऑफ ट्रेडिंग इज देयर लिक्विडिटी इज देयर एंड एट टाइम सम फॉरन इन्वेस्टर्स इन ऑर्डर टू सेव टैक्सेस इन्वेस्ट इन सर्टन कंट्रीज ओके बट देर इज वन मेजर डिसएडवांटेज इंडिया के लिए एक डिसएडवांटेज भी लेके आता है वो ये है कि हमें पता नहीं चलेगा कि वो पैसा जो है वो ब्लैक मनी है कि नहीं वो वाइट मनी है कि ब्लैक मनी है वो मनी प्रॉपरली अकाउंट किया गया है कि नहीं सो काइंड ऑफ रॉन्ग मनी आल्सो एंटर्स अ कंट्री थ्रू दिस आपको नहीं पता वो पैसा किसके एंड से आ रहा है उस बस पर्सन की आइडेंटिटी डिस्क्लोज नहीं है तो कई बार अनअकाउंटेड मनी भी एंटर कर जाता है इंडिया में थ्रू दिस सो दिस इज वन ऑफ द मेजर प्रॉब्लम दैट नीड्स टू बी टैक्स now talking about the decline in the p note so obviously during covid over time a bit of decline has been seen in the foreign investments and post covid various actions are being taken worldwide because of which foreign investors are taking away their investments from india to invest elsewhere theek hai ab agar hum baat kare central banks ki if we take the example of us it is hiking the interest rate so if investors are going to get more interest Over rates over there, they will withdraw their investments from India and invest in US. So, अगर कोई US का investor है जिसने P notes के through India में investment की है, अब उसको US में ही ज़्यादा interest मिलेगा. So, they will take away their investment from India and invest it back in US. So, these kinds of reasons, these kinds of actions which are taken by central banks elsewhere are affecting foreign investments coming to India. So, एक method foreign investment India में आने का P notes है, इसलिए हमने इसमें भी decline देखा. Now further, if I talk about future prospects, the Ukraine geopolitical situation which is going on, it can put more pressure on the level of investments coming to India. So, इससे भी affect हो सकती है India में investments. This was all about the P notes. Now let's come back to the question. हम लोगों को correct statements identify करनी है. So first is that P notes are financial instruments issued by FIIs to overseas investors without need to register themselves directly in India. Correct. P notes provide liquidity to the investors. ये भी correct है. Anonymity and ease of trading are some of its advantages. So ये तीनों ही statements correct है. That's why answer is option E. I hope you have clearly understood this concept of participatory notes. ये एक important concept है जिसके बारे में आपको पता होना चाहिए. Now coming to the second question that says, which of the following does not qualify to be a market infrastructure institution of India? सो so, ये एक टर्म इंपॉर्टेंट है एम आई आई वॉट आर एम आई आई एस विच इंस्टीट्यूशन इन इंडिया आर क्लासिफाइड एज द मार्केट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इंस्टीट्यूशन लेट्स डिस्कस दैट फर्स्ट देन वील कम बैक टू द क्वेश्चन सो आप लोगों को पता ही होगा एन एस सी के बारे में वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दी एन एस सी स्कैम गोइंग ऑन आई टुक अ सेपरेट सेशन ऑल्सो विच वॉज द एन एस सी स्कैंडल डी कोडेड वेयर वी टॉक अबाउट दी रॉन्ग डूइंग्स गोइंग ऑन विद द एन एस सी द गवर्नेंस लैब्स इज गोइंग ऑन ओवर देयर ओके वन वॉज द को लोकेशन स्कैम विच इज बीन टॉक ओवर द इयर्स सेकेंडली द Uh, uh, Chitra Ramakrishna uh, disclosed the important information about NSC to some uh, Himalayan yogi. That was another kind of a wrongdoing which was going on. And then SEBI came up with a order, a big order, where although it has just imposed the penalties on some of the wrongdoers, Anand Subramanian, on Chitra Ramakrishna, and more, it has. actually not played a well defined role which should have been played so sebi ne ye manne se mana kar diya tha ki jo himalayan yogi hai he is anand subramanian only okay we discussed in that session but cbi investigations are going on and it's coming into picture that uh, anand subramanian was only the himalayan yogi recently chitra ramakrishna has been taken uh, into custody by cbi and the investigations are going on so amid all this when sebi came up with the order uh, pe penalizing certain people in that very order sebi mentioned that nsc is a systemically important mii 
सो जो ऑर्डर हम लोगों ने डिस्कस किया था ना सेबी का जिसमें सेबी ने पेनल्टीज इम्पोज की थी इन रॉन्ग डूअर्स पे ऑल दो हमें लगता है कि वो एक सेटिस्फैक्ट्री डिसीजन नहीं था बिकॉज उनको आइडेंटिटी आइडेंटिफाई करनी चाहिए थी कि कौन है हिमालयन योगी एंड ऑल दोज एस्पेक्ट ऑन विच सेबी हैज नॉट येट वर्क बट स्टिल एन ऑर्डर केम सो उस ऑर्डर में एक चीज मैंशन थी एंड दैट वॉज दैट एन एस सी इज अ सिस्टमिकली इम्पोर्टेंट मार्केट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इंस्टीट्यूशन सो यहाँ से ये टर्म के बारे में हम डिस्कस कर लेते हैं कि मार्केट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इंस्टीट्यूशन क्या होती हैं और ये सिस्टमिकली इम्पोर्टेंट क्यों है और राइट सो लेट्स डिस्कस अ बिट अबाउट दिस एम आई लाइफ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू मस्ट नो द फुल फॉर्म इट इज मार्केट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इंस्टीट्यूशन अब ये क्या होती है नाउ वी नीड सर्टन फैसिलिटीज सर्टन सिस्टम्स फॉर आर कैपिटल मार्केट सो जो फंडिंग रेस करनी है जिनके लिए फंडिंग रेस करनी है उस फंडिंग को फर्दर जहाँ यूटिलाइज करना है ताकि इकोनॉमी ग्रो करे इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट हो वो चीजें जो फैसिलिटेट करती हैं इंस्टीट्यूशन वो होती हैं एम आई आईज दे प्रोवाइड द नेसेसरी सिस्टम्स नेसेसरी फैसिलिटीज दैट आर एक्चुअली हेल्पिंग द सिक्योरिटीज मार्केट द कैपिटल मार्केट टू एलोकेट और रीएलोकेट द मनी और रीएलोकेट द कैपिटल एंड द फाइनेंशियल रिसोर्सेज कहाँ से पैसा रेज करके कहाँ उसको यूज करना है वो सब कुछ जो इंस्टीट्यूशन अपने फैसिलिटीज के थ्रू प्रोवाइड कर रही हैं इतने सिस्टम्स के थ्रू फैसिलिटेट कर रही हैं वो इंस्टीट्यूशन होती हैं हमारी मार्केट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इंस्टीट्यूशन अब अगर मैं बात करूँ कि एम आई के अंडर कौन कौन सी इंस्टीट्यूशन आ जाती हैं सो वी हैव वेरियस स्टॉक एक्सचेंजेस वी हैव द डिपोजिटरीज वी हैव द क्लियरिंग हाउसेज these all are the members of or these not are the members but they are in themselves the mis abhi main aage discuss karungi ki kaun se stock exchanges kaun se depositories kaun se clearing houses ko market infrastructure institutions ke under classify kiya gaya hai so inko capital allocation system ka nucleus kaha jata hai because of the major role they play in promoting the growth in having a positive impact in the society in helping in the proper allocation of the capital now moving the head to the specific institutions which qualify as mii so india mein aisi kaun kaun si institutions hai jo mii's hai jaise ki maine kaha stock exchanges depositories aur clearing houses ye teeno hi categorize hui hai mii's ke under so seven stock exchanges hain jo sebi ne list kiye hain which are the mii's kaun kaun se seven exchanges hain we have bsc we have the calcutta stock exchange we have nsc the indian commodity exchange metropolitan stock exchange multi commodity exchange national commodity exchange so all these seven exchanges are mii's iske baad agar main baat karu depositories ki so we have two depositories which are qualified as mii's depositories ka kaam kya hai jo bhi hamari securities hai jo hamare demat account mein hoti hai jo electronic form mein hold ki jati hai so un securities ko safely rakhna aur transfer karna ye depositories ka kaam hai safely keeping the securities in the electronic form helping in their transfer this is the role of depositories so both the depositories the central depository services limited and the national securities depository limited ye dono hi MIIs हैं देन द सेवन क्लियरिंग हाउसेज ऑल्सो क्वालिफाई एस दी एम आई आई सो सेवन क्लियरिंग हाउसेज कौन कौन से हैं इंडिया इंटरनेशनल क्लियरिंग कॉरपोरेशन इंडिया क्लियरिंग कॉरपोरेशन मेट्रोपोलिटन क्लियरिंग कॉरपोरेशन मल्टी कमोडिटी एक्सचेंज क्लियरिंग कॉरपोरेशन नेशनल कमोडिटी क्लियरिंग लिमिटेड नेशनल सिक्योरिटीज क्लियरिंग कॉरपोरेशन एंड एन एस सी आई एफ आई एफ एस सी क्लियरिंग कॉरपोरेशन ये सेवन के सेवन क्लियरिंग हाउसेज जो हैं ये मार्केट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इंस्टीट्यूशंस हैं ओके आई होप दिस कॉन्सेप्ट इज क्लियर अब हम बात करते हैं कि ये सिस्टमिकली इम्पोर्टेंट क्यों है वॉट इज द सिस्टमिक इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ दीज मार्केट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इंस्टीट्यूशन सो टेकिंग द सिंपल एग्जाम्पल इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द स्टॉक एक्सचेंज देयर आर अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स अ लॉट ऑफ इन्वेस्टर्स हु हैव देयर अकाउंट्स हु आर इन्वेस्टिंग सो अज अमाउंट ऑफ मनी इज बींग इन्वेस्टेड इन दीज स्टॉक एक्सचेंजेस देन देर आर वेरियस कंपनीज विच आर रेजिंग द फंडिंग थ्रू दैम देर इज a lot of market capitalization of various listed companies itne sare accounts hain itni sari companies listed hain itna zyada market capitalization hai itni zyada funding raise ho rahi hai that means a lot of uh, money is being involved over here a lot of investors people are involved over here so this shows how important are these mii's if something goes wrong if some problem arises all of them are going to get impacted 
that's why these are systemically important institutions okay now if i take example of nsc glitch nsc mein kafi glitches ho rahe hain recently hi monday ko bhi ek glitch hua uh, and uh, पास फाइव ईयर्स से कभी ना कभी ग्लिचेस हो रहे हैं एक आधा बार तो तीन चार घंटे के लिए ट्रेडिंग भी रुकी है सो व्हेन दिस दीज काइंड्स ऑफ थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग सम ग्लिचेस आर हैपनिंग अ लॉट ऑफ मनी इज लॉस्ड बाय वेरियस इन्वेस्टर्स बाय वेरियस कंपनी सो बहुत मेजर लॉस हो जाता है अगर कुछ सेकेंड्स के लिए भी प्रॉब्लम आती है सो इफ समथिंग गोज रॉन्ग मेजरली देन इट कैन हैव अ मेजर डिवास्टेटिंग इम्पैक्ट ऑन दी इंटायर इकॉनमी so that's why they are systemically important then if i talk about other financial institutions banks and vfcs they are a lot in number but if i talk about the stock exchanges agar main baat kar depositories ki clearing corporations ki to ye limited hain they are few in number and they being few in number they have the responsibility to cater to the entire market so this shows how important they are unhe puri market ko cater karna hai puri market ko ye service provide karni hai सो कुछ भी फेलियर होता है कोई भी प्रॉब्लम आती है इफ देर इज एनी प्रॉब्लम वी विल हैव कैटेस्ट्रॉफिक कलैप्सेस एक डोमिनो इफेक्ट होगा एक के बाद एक सब चीजों पे इंपैक्ट होने लगेगा एंड ओवरऑल आर इकोनॉमी इज गोइंग टू सी अ मेजर डाउनफॉल बिकॉज ऑफ दिस दैट्स व्हाई हैविंग प्रॉपर गवर्नेंस प्रॉपर ओवरसाइट ओवर दीज इंस्टीट्यूशंस इज रियली वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ओके सो दिस वाज ऑल अबाउट एमआईआईएस नाउ कमिंग बैक टू द क्वेश्चन we have to identify which of these does not qualify to be an mii so nsc to hai central depository bhi hai multi commodity exchange clearing corporation bhi hai we have discussed everything over here okay so coming back to the question all of these qualify to be a market infrastructure institution aisi koi nahi hai jo qualify nahi karti that's why answer is option e that none of the above does not qualify okay now coming to third question that says which of the following correctly defines economic sanctions so we are uh, hearing a lot about this term economic sanctions russia uh, the economic sanctions are being imposed on russia right so ye economic sanctions hote kya hai Russia पे बहुत इकोनॉमिक सैक्शन इम्पोज हो रहे हैं वी डिस्कस्ड इन वन ऑफ दैट स्विफ्ट सिस्टम इज गेटिंग बैंड इन रशिया सो वॉट डू वी मीन बाई इकोनॉमिक सैक्शन लेट्स डिस्कस अट अबाउट दैट एंड वी कम बैक टू द क्वेश्चन इकोनॉमिक सैक्शन का मतलब होता है किसी टाइप की पेनल्टी किसी टाइप का बैन किसी टाइप की रिस्ट्रिक्शन लगाना एक कंट्री में ताकि जो भी वो डिसीजन ले रही है वो बैक ऑफ करे वो अपने डिसीजन को मॉडिफाई करे और सिक्योरिटी uh, फॉरन पॉलिसी पर्पज के जो भी ऑब्जेक्टिव हैं वो फुलफिल हो सके लाइक इफ आई टॉक अबाउट रशिया इट इज इन वेडिंग इन टू यूक्रेन इट इज क्रिएटिंग प्रॉब्लम फॉर यूक्रेन सो कंट्रीज आर इम्पोजिंग रिस्ट्रिक्शन इन दैम टू नॉट एक्सपोर्ट नॉट अलाउ नॉट इम्पोर्टिंग फ्रॉम दैम नॉट एक्सपोर्टिंग टू दैम और नॉट प्रोवाइडिंग दैम दी नॉट अलाउंग दैम टू यूज दी स्विफ्ट सिस्टम थ्रू विच द फाइनेंशियल मैसेजेस आर एक्सचेंज टू फैसिलिटेट द पेमेंट्स सो वॉट आर ऑल दीज ये सब किसी ना किसी टाइप के रिस्ट्रिक्शन किसी ना किसी टाइप के बैंस हैं ताकि जो रशिया है वो बैक ऑफ कर सके सो वेन एवर एनी पेनल्टी और बैन इज इम्पोज ऑन अ कंट्री टू मेक इट मॉडिफाई इट्स डिसीजन टू मेक श्योर दैट दे टू मेक श्योर दैट दे बेसिकली वर्क इन अ प्रॉपर मैनर फैसिलिटेट द फ्रीडम ऑफ द कंट्रीज अलाउ दैम to take proper decisions so this is the basic objective of an economic sanction jisme aapke withdrawal aa jate hain of customary trade and financial relations aap trade restrict kar dete ho financial relations hamper karne lagte ho taki wo country improve kar sake apni functioning mein modify kar sake apne decisions okay so iska impact kya hoga see no economy wants to be a closed economy Every economy interacts with other economies to get the benefits. आप दूसरी economies के साथ link up रखना चाहोगे ताकि आप उन्हें export करके earn कर सको ताकि जिन चीज़ें आप खुद नहीं बना सकते वो आप import कर सको अपनी raw materials import करके अपनी country में production facilitate कर सको जब production होगी तभी तो output होगा income होगी employment होगी Okay, so countries are interdependent on each other. to get the access to some kind of a new technology which other country has but you don't have you need to have connections with other countries aap sabse cut off karke baith jaoge to aap as a country you will not succeed in long run aap grow nahi kar paoge aap develop nahi kar paoge right so when you are imposing sanctions every such growth opportunity is getting hampered your development will get restricted 
So cutting ties with the countries by imposing sanctions will affect their trade, their financial assistance, their, their, uh, it will affect the mobility of people, the mobility of assets, the trade will get hampered. Okay, kai bar kisi particular business pay, kisi group pay, kisi individual pay restrictions lagte hain. So they will uh, be negatively impacted. Although, if I am putting some restriction on a country, then if I am doing export import, karti hu, then I will suffer. But when it is in larger interest of the society, important to impose such sanctions, we have to do so. Okay, so one of the interdependence hai, wo ek detrimental effect laegi if such sanctions are imposed. Obviously, the inflow or an outflow of goods and services will be hampered. Suppose Russia is dependent on some country to import certain raw materials. So if it will not be able to import them, they, it will not be able to produce the output which uses that as a raw material, as an input. So that will impact. If you have a country restriction, then you can take impact. If there is a group of countries these restrictions, lagai, then the risk element is more. So if I talk about NATO, if I talk about OECD, if such group of countries together impose certain restrictions, then the risk is high and your country will be more economically impacted. So, these are possible kuch impacts. Now, I will give you an Russia ka example. Dhu. These are not the full-fledged economic sanctions but imposed on Russia, but just few examples. Okay, now Russia has a SWIFT system pe ban lag gaya, and then uh, Russia has its sovereign wealth fund called Russia Direct Investment Fund. So, there are restrictions on it, where it can invest, ho sakta hai, from where it can earn the interest, and then the airspace has been denied, export controls have been denied, trade relations denied, export import hamper hoga. So US, UK, EU, other nations are imposing a lot of restrictions on Russia because of the uh, because of what it's doing with Ukraine. So it can prove to be really very detrimental for Russia. It's better that they back off, otherwise their economy is going to suffer a lot. Okay. So this was all which I wanted to discuss about economic sanctions. So in this common statement that properly economic sanctions define karti, it's the first statement that they are the penalties, bans levied on a country to push its it to modify the strategic decisions. All right. Now let's discuss the last question. Which of the following is not a part of World Bank Group? So World Bank Group ke under five institutions aati hai. World Bank Group five institutions ki ek group hai. I'll discuss about this further. But before that, what is recently in news? World Bank Group ki ek institution hai MEGA. World Bank Group has one institution called Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency. So uh, Mr. Junaid Kamal Ahmed has been appointed as its vice president of the operations. Okay. So he is a Bangladeshi economist. He was the India's head of World Bank and now from April onwards he is going to get the charge of being a vice president of MEGA. Jo MIGA hai, Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency hai, iska kaam kya hai? As a member of World Bank Group, it basically helps the developing nations by providing them the credit guarantee, the insurances. So insurance, credit guarantees provide karna developing countries ke investors, co lenders ko ye kaam hai MEGA ka. Okay, so he is the second Bangladeshi national who has been appointed at such a high position in World Bank. In se pehle, Faisal Chaudhary was the one who had such a high position. Now, talking about World Bank. So, World Bank Group, jo hai, it's headquartered in Washington. Ye five institutions ki ek grouping hai. It's a grouping of five institutions which work towards providing the financial and technical assistance to various assistance to various developing countries. So, it's my punch. Institutions are jati hai, IBRD, IBA, IFS, IFC, MEGA and EXIT. So IBRD stands for International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Iska kaam kya hai? The role is to provide loans, credit grants to these developing nations. Second aa jati hai, International Development Association, IDA. Iska kaam kya hai? Iska ki kaam hai loans provide karana but it provides low and no interest loans to low income countries. Okay, so Ek, uh, area in ka particular hai jisko ye loans, no interest loans provide karate hai. Third is IFC, the International Finance Corporation. So it provides necessary advisors, the, it does necessary investments, it helps in the asset management of various government of, uh, and companies of these developing nations. Iske baat humne MEGA ka already discussed kar liya. Last is EXIT, International Center for Settlement of Investment Disputes. As the name suggests, it helps in settling the disputes between the investors and the country. So coming back to our question, which of these is not part of World Bank Group? IBRD, MEGA, it, no, it's not EXIF, it's EXIT. All of these, we have just discussed, all of these are part. 
So answer is option D that none of the above is not a part. Okay. So this was all for today's session. I hope it was useful for you all. With this, I would like to end up the session. Thank you so much.